Hello my friends, welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you here. And thank you to those of you who have subscribed. I've seen a huge number of subscription, subscriber increase over the last, well over the last four weeks, numbers are really starting to trend up. And that for me is what makes the channel work. Having people subscribe is what enables me to make more videos. So basically, if you have subscribed, then you've helped to create more videos about electric cars, and renewable energy. So that is a good thing. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Now, I just learned something very interesting, and that is that there is a different kind of battery. And this battery has been created as a response to a problem. A good problem, but still a problem nonetheless. That problem is energy storage. Apparently, a lot of towns and places where they have wind turbines they aren't able to use all of the energy so what do they do with this wasted energy that they're not using well you can either buy batteries which are still fairly expensive however are declining considerably in price and as lithium ion phosphate batteries and sodium batteries are used in energy storage those prices will come down even more another way that we can actually store this massive amount of excess energy being created that isn't being used is through hot rocks. I'd never heard of this before, but there was an article today on Clean Technica about a hot rock storage battery. Now the potential of storing energy in stone has been documented in two Danish innovation projects performed at DTU Rezo by Andel and Steesdale Storage Technologies respectively. The projects confirmed that stones can withstand repeated heating, that it is possible to re-extract the energy from the storage at a constant temperature, and that a large-scale storage facility can contribute to the solution of challenges in the electricity system. Through this, the level of knowledge on large-scale storage facilities was elevated from an idea into something that is actually realistic and technically feasible. So, how does it work? How do we actually take this excess energy that we can't use and put it into rocks, into heating rocks, and then take it back out? And how efficient is it? Now, the energy storage on which Andel and Steesdale are working contains crushed stones the size of peas, so very, very small stones that are stored in insulated steel tanks. When there is an excess supply of electricity in the electricity grid, the storage is charged using a specifically designed heat pump system which moves heat energy from one set of tanks to the other. Now, the stones get colder in the tanks from which the energy is taken, while they get a lot hotter in the tanks that receive the heat, as hot as 600 degrees Celsius. And they stay hot for quite a long time. Now, the heat can be stored in the stones for many days, and when more electricity is needed in the grid, the heat energy is returned from the hot tanks to the, cool the cold tanks using a turbine which produces the electricity. It's a highly efficient solution due to a low loss of energy. Well, I'll tell you how much that loss is in a second. Now, with this particular project that I'm about to talk about, the grid scale energy storage consists of one or more sets of steel tanks filled with crushed stone. So the small pea-sized rocks charging and discharging is obtained using a system of compressors and turbines. Both the number of sets of storage tanks and the number of turbine units will vary depending on the length of the discharge cycle wanted as well as the electrical power that is actually needed for the particular use. Now, personally, I have a lot of questions about this. How exactly does this system work? When I first read about it, I didn't fully understand it. Does it move the gravel around? How much efficiency loss is there with this kind of project? Now, on the Seastar website, it says, the charge discharge system comprises one compressor turbine system for charging and another similar but differently dimensional system for discharging. The charging system is operated in a heat pump cycle. The COP coefficient of performance is on the order of 250% depending on temperature ranges. So the discharging system is operated in a so-called Brayton cycle, similar to the cycle of a gas turbine. The efficiency is on the order of 20 to 25% depending on temperature ranges. So the total round trip efficiency is the product of the charging COP and the discharging efficiency. For serial production systems, the round trip efficiency is around about 55 to 60%. So you're gonna get 45 to 
energy loss with this kind of system. Obviously, a lithium ion round trip or a lithium ion phosphate round trip energy system is going to give you a lot less losses, but also potentially costs a lot more money. So what is the key here? Well, the key is price. Now, the expected price for this system is around about 10 euro per kilowatt hour compared with, at the moment, around 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour for lithium iron energy storage. So let's say lithium iron phosphate batteries as they come down in cost, which they are. Iron is one of the most abundant products on the planet. There is certainly no shortage of iron or phosphate. What this is going to mean is we're going to continue to see declines in cost. But let's say we have current costs. BYD's current cost is under 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. It's about $94 per kilowatt hour. Still, if you compare it to this, they're saying that the system costs here are $10 per kilowatt hour, 10 euros per kilowatt hour, which is around about, it's pretty close to 10 US dollars per kilowatt hour, meaning the system is incredibly affordable, incredibly cheap. So even if you're getting efficiency losses of 45, 40 to 45%, you're still looking at an enormous difference in cost massive savings here through this rock well this gravel storage system sounds amazing now the obvious strength of a system like this is scalability there have been test projects in development at dtu that began in march 2019 that have since shown that the approach of using rocks or gravel to store energy as heat is in fact feasible it does work to me, this is incredibly exciting news and it could solve the biggest challenge of renewable energy, which is when we create too much of it and it's intermittent, what do we do with this? We need battery storage. Battery storage is still fairly expensive, although it's coming down in price, but this gives us another option. I love this. Now, the energy and fiber optic group Andel has decided to place a new energy storage facility at Rodby. Denmark, an ideal location when it comes to removing the barriers to the green transition. Now, currently, Rodby is looking forward to becoming the home of a new energy storage facility, which has the potential to re remove one of the most difficult obstacles to a future 100% green electricity supply. Now, this new energy facility, this hot rock battery storage facility, will be able to store electricity from, renewable, from renewables at times when the wind blows and the sun shines for later use. This is what we need. Everyone needs this. Now the new storage system is called grid scale and it stores energy in large tanks filled with crushed stone as we've just discussed. Now the CEO at Andel, Jesper Helmund said, as a society, we are facing an absolutely crucial and comprehensive task in reducing climate change. Seen in the light of the most recent IPCC climate report, the task has not diminished. At Andel, we want to be part of the solution and lead the way by investing in the green transition. For instance, through the extension of the charging infrastructure, as well as using our knowledge to develop new green technologies, we are extremely happy that we have found the perfect geographical location and can speed up the construction of our hot rock energy storage so that we get one step closer to storing power from renewable energy sources. Now, if you're probably thinking, well, is it really a big issue that overproduction of energy is being wasted. Well, actually it is. There are many places around the world where there is massive overproduction of, say, solar during hot times or wind energy during extremely windy times that is just basically wasted. So this is a very realistic issue. Now at Lowell and Falster, the production of renewable energy is so large that sometimes the energy producing facilities must be temporarily shut off as consumption does not match production. So sometimes they have to actually turn the windmills off because there's too much energy being produced. Now, Jesper Helmand elaborates on what's happening. Here we have a clear-cut example of one of the challenges included in the green transition. There is an abundance of renewable energy, but it cannot be transported off Lowland Falster without very large investments in the electrical infrastructure. Taken alone, the offshore wind turbines produce twice as much power as is used locally Therefore, you must use the electricity for something else or you must be able to store it. That's if you don't want to just turn it off. And obviously turning it off seems like a complete waste, doesn't it? So there is a grid scale storage facility of hot rocks going in at Rodby in Denmark. And this demonstration facility is intended to be used for at least 15 years. 
Construction of the, of the facility is beginning as soon as the required planning permissions have been obtained. It appears as though well, that will happen in the next few months. And when those permits are obtained, it looks as though the facility will be completed within 12 months. So the company is saying that within 12 months from now, this facility will be basically the world's first commercial grade, com commercial size facility where they have rocks storing energy. This technology looks extremely promising. The price is the key issue here. Being around 80% cheaper than an equivalent lithium ion battery storage, this facility and this project, this technology really could change the world in so many positive ways. I'm really excited to see these new hot rock battery storage systems go up. Obviously, this one is just the start. Hopefully, there's many yet to come. Tell me your thoughts. Do you think this would work? Will it work in your mind? For what reason? Won't it work? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.